It is one of the hottest physical activities going, but it's not for the faint of heart. We are talking mixed martial arts. Now, just watch these people. They are training, and they are training hard. And a couple of weeks ago, my ignorance on the subject was vast. But then I got exposed to a whole bunch of people with a whole lot of passion about this topic. So you're wondering, what does this have to do with New Mexico style? Guess what? everything. It turns out one of the top go-to guys in the entire world is training some of the toughest fighters out there and he grew up here in Albuquerque. Certainly a success story and a wonderful business model for all of us. He's got a jumping business and it is the envy of a lot of other training facilities. Now here's the background on the mixed martial arts for those of you who don't know. Check out this match, okay? It's fierce competition. There are a whole lot of ways to fight out there. Of course, martial arts, judo, karate, jutsido, and then there's boxing, there's wrestling, there's kickboxing, and there are so many distinct styles, we can't even list them. Put them all together, you've got yourself mixed martial arts. And the man that is sitting next to me is the Yoda of mixed martial arts. We want to welcome Greg Jackson. Woohoo! Yeah. Woo Raise the roof. Nice to have <laughs> uh, you. It's my pleasure. Thank <laughs> you for having me on. Well, we are so happy to have you here. And of course, the man sitting over there is Brian Chavez, and he is our floor director and resident expert on MMA. Yeah. Very Absolutely. happy to be here. Thank you for having yeah. me. Glad it's different that. being on this side of the camera versus the opposite side. <laughs> I'm sure we have you on our side of the couch. <laughs> so, you didn't, you weren't born here in Albuquerque, no. but you were raised here. I was indeed. Um, I was born in Washington, D.C., but when I was very, very young, like mm -hmm. six months old, so young that I can't remember anything <laughs> else, my family moved here, um, and, uh, you know, it's, it's, Albuquerque is, is where I grew up. It's who I am. I, I love this state, and I'll never leave. I've had a lot of offers to go other places, and I'll never leave this place. How did you get into MMA? Well, um, I was raised in the South Valley, um, and when uh, when you're a kid in the South Valley, one of the realities is it's kind of rough and tumble place. Um, it's one of the best places in the world, but uh, it, it's also rough and tumble, and so you know you learn, need to uh, learn to defend yourself. Mm. And so it started there. It started with the with wanting to be able to defend myself the best I could, and uh, kind of bringing that core of, of just wanting something just for me mm -hmm. and then trying to take it and, and, and go as far as I could with it is really what got me into it. Wow. Yeah. I mean, Brian, you talked a little bit about how he's got the, the machismo. The machismo, <laughs> yeah. The machismo factor. I was uh, talking to Greg earlier before the show and I was telling him, uh, growing up I was half Asian, so I got, uh, you, you're different in a different environment and people mm -hmm. want to come test your differences, so I either had to, I, I was either taking this, I know karate because he's Asian, <laughs> or, or you're different, so I want to beat you up. So I either right. have to pretend I, w I knew karate, <laughs> or I just had to, you know, front to run away or, or sure. get beat up. You get survival instincts. <laughs> right. Yeah. So I, I know where Greg's coming from, where you got to learn fast to defend yourself. And it's, it's yeah. really, a, it's an important skill. For me, it's a life skill. Like, if you should know how to read, you know, you should know how to defend yourself. Absolutely. Yeah. Especially these times. And I think even for women. And, I mean, I, I, we'll get into that in a little bit. But I really want to know why you opted to train rather than fight based on, you know, growing up and, and fighting. Why did you decide you wanted to be a trainer professionally? Well, that's an interesting story. I was raised by hippie parents. So that oh, are, wow. and they're the best people in the whole world. What mm -hmm. they drilled into my head was happiness comes from helping people. And oh, it's, like it's kind of, a, it's cliche, but they really mm -hmm. believed it. And so uh, that's how I grew up. And uh, so I wanted to take something that could be construed as negative. I mean, you can see fighting being this negative right. kind of pastime. And I wanted to use that knowledge that I had growing up to help people the best I could wow. and so that's kind of where I became a trainer like I get a huge kick out of training people out of helping people out of just being a part of a process mm -hmm. that I get to see people's dreams come true it's really great that's so cool yeah. that is so, I love hearing that now how do you recognize whether someone has a talent for mixed martial arts yeah you know, that's a really interesting question as well because it's not as simple as you think. It's not like a Rocky Balboa movie where this guy <laughs> dun, 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 comes dun, dun, in dun, dun, and they, dun, dun, dun. there, you've got it, kid. You know, you're ready to go. Right. Um, it takes so much to be a great mixed martial artist. You have to be a humble guy. You have to be incredibly educated. There's so many different aspects mm. to the sport that you really have to be educated. Most of my guys have college degrees. I mean, they're, wow. they're very intelligent people. And then you have to be able to deal with your success and deal with your failures. It's such... 
a, a hard game to be a part of if you're going to take the fighting aspect of it. Um, yeah. that, you, that you really have to have this really deep intestinal fortitude to, to make sure that, that you can deal. Even success yeah. is crazy. And it's not all about size. No, it really isn't. Yeah. And that's what's great about our sport is mm -hmm. we are scientific. We are, yeah. we're trying to use leverage. We're acquiring angles. We're not just running at each other and, and hitting <laughs> each other. You know what I mean? Like it really yeah. is a scientific endeavor. And uh, if you aren't educated, you are going to be in a lot of trouble. Hey. Now, using that science to apply to your fighters, uh, like uh, Keith Jardine, for instance, with his unorthodox fighting style, or stance, actually, it's not more of a style, it's a stance, when I, when I noticed it, was that something that he brought in, or that you kind of... A little bit of both. You know, Keith Jardine is a master of rhythm and timing, and all the fighting is like music. Like, the, the, mm. the best analogy I can give you for fighting is like jazz, or mm. good classical music mm. like Bach. It's these rhythms and these timings, and it's changing, so you, you establish a rhythm, and then you break it, and then you reestablish it again as you're trying to punch or do whatever you want to do. And Keith Jardine is a master of ta taking that rhythm and changing it. He changes it during fights. Wow. And the more educated you are, the cooler it is because you really get a sense of when you, when you get educated about the martial arts and then you watch it in action, you're like, oh, it really is. Like, look how he's, he's moving and then he stops and then he goes and then he stops. Right. And so it, these nuances are just amazing. I'll never and look at a sheet of music again the same. <laughs> yeah, it's an art. It's a symphony. It really, and it really is. You know, I never held Mark Twain always said, when, when he learned how the river worked, when he was navigating the river with riverboats, he said the river became a little less beautiful because that mysticism was gone. But for me, it's exactly the opposite. Mm. The more I understand about something, the more beautiful it becomes. And I with mixed that. martial arts, that's really a, a, an imperative. If you're going to watch it, the more educated you are, mm. you really start to see these amazing... It's not just two guys slugging it out, because that's sure. what it looks like when you're, mm -hmm. you're like, whoa, right. what it is this? It looks scary initially, right. you, know you know what I mean? You're, you're, you're sitting at home, and there's these cage fighters on. Yeah. But one, you really start understanding the game, and, and watching combat is kind of this moving non-static art wow. it's gorgeous well and you said it's like watching guys and people sometimes get intimidated but there's also girls doing it isn't there there is and we have some of the best female fighters in the world right here in Albuquerque um, Julie Kedzie is an amazing female fighter she's kind of the, the leader of the female team um, Holly wow. Holm is one of our boxers sure. is making the move over to MMA as well um, so there's a lot of great women that uh, that are doing the sport um, and uh, like Julie Kedzie is just a great success story. She's a, a woman that moved here from Indiana, okay. had a kind of an okay record, and uh, she's really flourished and taken off. She's a huge hometown hit now, and uh, yeah, she's a lot of fun to watch. What is the training like for a woman? You know, it's just like a guy. I'm okay. one of those, I was raised as a feminist, so um, <laughs> you, you know what I mean? Like, if, 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 uh, if a guy can do it, a girl can do it. I love and so, it. Uh, we, uh, we are that, it doesn't change. The training doesn't change. Now, obviously, right. There has to be a separation. Guys are a lot bigger than girls. Sure. There needs to be a separation. But uh, it's important that you have the same opportunities, the same abilities, and everything's the same. It's just you don't quite have to go with the heavyweight giant. Would you say the aggression level is different? Like oh, guys with girls, are they, are they, they both get equally elevated as far as like aggression goes I think they're I think they're equal boy I, I almost like sparring the guys more than I like sparring the girls Some, sometimes the girls really go after you yeah. especially a girl who's heartbroken or has oh. been done wrong yeah. you're, you're getting all the, the yeah. payback for the ex right, yeah. Yeah. I, just, I cover and run away we're going to have to we're, we're going to have to get in there and do some uh, learning yeah and because oh, yeah. you don't have to fight you can use it for self-defense or yes. for staying in shape right most people don't fight at all most mm -hmm, people yeah. are just doing it for self-defense the fighters are actually a very small segment. Wow. Well, how would you start yeah. that then? If you're, if you're, you're, let's say you go to the gym, you're training just to train, mm -hmm. and then you wanted to flip mode to the uh, the actual fighting. professional fighting art side of it. How would you do that? Well, you need to make sure that you have a very good knowledge base. Like a lot of people in our sport think that you can just show up and and then fight because you got in fights as a kid or something like that. And no other sport really has to deal with that. Yeah. Like you don't say. Oh, I got, you know, I'm a tennis player, so I can go play in the pro tennis. So you have to have a very strong knowledge base, and that's the basic classes that are offered in my school. That's so much fun. Well, we have so much more to talk about with Greg Jackson. We'll be right back after this break.